Hello friends. So today I would like to talk to you about uh, a course which is called a primer for research and writing. A lot of you come to me with requests to help you in writing and uh, helping you write for research and for scientific publication. So that's why I designed this course uh, so that I can guide you and direct you even if I'm not available in person so that I can give you a link to this video and you can watch it. So there are uh, several things that we are going to cover as a part of this course. I thought of about 13 things which I can talk about in different short videos. The first video today we are going to talk about how to search the PubMed. After this we have got other things that we are going to talk about in this course as a part of this course. We would be talking about inserting citations. In a manuscript we would be talking about formatting while writing. We would be talking about copy and paste options in VAD. We would be talking about how to make a PowerPoint. I'll also give you a few tips on how to make a presentation. Then we will talk about how to write a specific scientific publication. In this, we are going to divide the setup into seven different aspects. We're going to write, um, talk about how to write the title of the manuscript. And then I will talk to you about how to write the introduction of a manuscript followed by methods, the observations, discussion, conclusion, and then finally the abstract. So in this video today, I'm going to talk to you about how to search the PubMed. So there are several things in searching the PubMed which I'm going to talk to you about. These are going to be how to sign in, how to check the database, what are the keywords that you should use, what are the Boolean operators, what how to manage results. You get sometimes so many results that you don't know what to do with them. Then I'll talk to you about how to apply filters. We'll talk about displaying options. We'll talk about send to options. We'll talk about how to save a search and how to share a search. And then we'll talk about some advanced sharing options. So let's go to PubMed and see how this website looks like. So if you have a browser, any browser, you go to PubMed dot com or pubmed dot gov or whatever way you choose so let's see how the pubmed homepage looks like so this is precisely how the pubmed homepage is going to look like you have uh, the search bar here in which you are going to write your search words or the keywords so let's say you are doing a paper with me on anemia and you write anemia now anemia could be spelt like A-N-E-M-I-A or it could be spelt like A-N-A-N-A-E-M-I-A depending upon whether you are using the American spelling or the British spelling. So after you've put in the keywords, you write search and what you find after you search is that you have practically uh, 2,19,022 articles. There is no way anyone can write or uh, read through so many articles. So friends, what we learned so far is the keyword. We use the keyword anemia. And did you notice this keyword which was or, which is used as a connect between anemia or anemia. So now what it is doing, this, this word or is called the Boolean operator. And there are three different Boolean operators. These are the OR or, and the and and not not all these three are considered to be boolean operators now let's see what they do if you are typing anemia or anemia with two different spellings pubmed has now found articles for you which have either of these two words it could be spelt in either way and it has given you 22 lakhs 19022 articles now let's see what happens when we write anemia and anemia. So now if I do a search, it gives me, let's see how many. Oh, it still gives me 22,19,022 uh, articles. Let's see if I was searching for iron deficiency anemia and I did with iron or anemia and let's see if we did anemia or iron. When we search anemia or iron, we get practically 3,98,025 articles. It has picked up all the articles 
which have either anemia or iron appearing in any any place in the article. Supposing I wanted to work only on anemia, which was iron related. So I could write anemia and iron. That means anemia and iron, both these terms should be available in the paper or in the publication. So when I search with this, what I find is now I'm limited to only 34,087 articles, which is 10 times lesser than what I was searching before. Supposing I was trying to search anemia, which is not related to iron. So what I can do is I can write anemia, not iron. So this will give me all the papers in which there is the word anemia, but if there is the word iron, then it will not pick up those papers and it will pick up only those papers which has anemia but does not have the word iron. And if I do the search again, now it gives me 1,84,935 articles. So these are articles which have word anemia but do not have iron. So this highlights the concept of the word and, not and or, which are the three Boolean operators which are used to combine the keywords in the search bars that we use to search uh, PubMed. But even if you get up, let's say, if unlike 84,935 articles, there is no way that we can read all these articles. So for this, we come to what we call the filters. So here on the left-hand side of the PubMed uh, page, homepage, we have got what are called the filters. And there are different kinds of filters, the article types, the text availability, the publication dates, and the species which are displayed. Then there are some other filters which are not being displayed. So here it says show additional filters. So when I click this, it asks me which additional filters which I would I like to use. And so I want to display language, I want to display sex, I want to display ages, and I want to say display search fields. And when I click show, it shows me all these filters here in the left panel. And let me see if I were to choose only English articles which have anemia but not iron. What do I get if I click English? I find that the search is now reduced to 1,47,901 articles. And here the filter English has been highlighted and made bold so that you know that these are the articles only in English. We have refused to accept or see any article which is not in English. Supposing I find that even this one is uh, too high a number, so I might want to look the articles which are specifically or uh, more relevant to my search. And here I can use this option called search fields. So when I choose the search fields, it gives me a dialog box in which there is a drop down menu. And I can choose that the search words, words should appear only in the title of the paper. And when I click apply, it shows me search words must be appearing in the title of the paper. So now these are papers in which the word anemia appears in the title of the paper, but not the word iron. And here you see that you are now left with only 27,249 articles. But all these articles would definitely be anemia and definitely not have iron in these articles. So this gives me a much closer and definitive search. Supposing I was trying to do a systematic review and I wanted to see only articles which were randomized control trials. So here I could choose the article type. It is not showing me an option of, not, of randomized control style. So here is there is something called customize. When I click customize, it again opens another dialog box. And here I could scroll down to randomized control trials and click this. And when I ask it to show, it starts showing me in the options, the randomized control trials. And when I click randomized control trial, then it will show me only randomized control trials. There are only 555 randomized control trials. So, so much for searching PubMed in the first video and we will take up the rest of the topics in the next video. So, thank you for being with me. Thank you for joining me and see you again in the next video on how to search PubMed.